Hey everybody, Kevin here with Your Best Groove and Groove Tutorials. And in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to show you how to create an email sequence with Groove Mail, and we're going to include conditional logic in the process. But before we get into the video, make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss any of the videos that are coming out here from Groove Tutorials. All right, let's take a look at how to create an email sequence with Groove Mail. Let's move right into Groove Mail. And from there, we're going to go to Sequences. And this is where we're going to set up our follow-up sequence by clicking New Sequence on the upper right. And we're going to name this My Follow-Up Sequence and give it a description and create sequence. First thing that this is going to ask us to do is to set a trigger. Trigger is what's going to cause this sequence to launch. And we have three possible options here. Number one, we can say if they receive a tag, then we're going to launch the sequence. So we select the tag that we're going to use. And you can select multiple tags here if you want more than one tag to trigger the sequence. The second one is if they are added to a list. If we, for example, add them to this MX Toolbox list, that would trigger this sequence. And the third one is if they fill out a specific form. Depending on what forms you have in your account, we trigger the sequence by filling out a specific form. For this example, I'm going to leave this blank because we're not actually wanting to trigger this sequence. It's an example, but those are the ways you can trigger a sequence. So you can see at the top here that it has no triggers. It has zeros next to each one of these, which is fine because we can subscribe to the sequence via several other mechanisms within the Groove platform. Let's go ahead and add our first email. So we're going to go to the top left under Actions and click send email. From here, we're going to give it a name. This is the name of the email. So I might say first email in the sequence, or I could name the purpose of the email or the content of the email. Secondly, we're going to choose a sender. And these would be the senders that you have set up inside of your GrooveMail account. And I'm choosing Kevin Amazon, which is my Amazon SMTP sender. The subject, this is the subject that your email recipient is going to see. And we're going to call that subject one. And you can put a preview text in here if you want to. And before we move further, we're going to go ahead and say this is going to be an active part of this sequence. We'll move over here on the top next to that to message. And here's where we can actually build our message. We can use the professional editor or the basic email editor. And because I'm just showing how to set up the sequence, I'm going to use basic email editor. And I'm going to say, dear, and I'm going to fill that in with just a few details. And you're going to put in the actual email. And once you're done with that, you will click done. So you'll see that this trigger has nothing on it. And then the first thing we're going to do in this sequence is send an email. Let's add a delay before we send our next email by going over here to the left on actions and clicking time delay. At this point, we can choose right after the previous step, in which case it would send email one and immediately send email two, or we can wait a number of days or hours. So we can wait five days or six hours or whatever the delay is that we want it to be. And we're going to make this active and click done. Or we can choose to wait to a specific date. We can go to the calendar. We can click the date. Next, we can click the time. And now it's going to wait until September 24, 2023 at 1019 to send this next email. Let's click done. And we can see that this sequence is beginning to develop. We have no triggers. We have send email one. We have a time delay that's going to wait for a specific date. And you could do that by hours or days, whichever you're looking to delay. Let's send another email following that delay. And we're going to call this email two. Subject will be email two. Again, you're filling this in with specific details. The message is going to be content. And we set that up and click done. We can see that we're building no triggers, send an email, wait for a specific date, and then send a second email. We can add the ability to send an SMS, which you'll need to have some special things set up, a Twilio account and so forth. We can send postcards. You'll need a close them account. But let's do this. Let's add a tag saying that they've received the second email. And I'm just going to choose a test category with a test tag. But what I want you to see is that anywhere in your sequence, you can put a tag onto an individual. So by adding a tag like this, you can create 
the mechanism in the back end to know who has received which emails. This won't tell you if they've opened it, but it will tell you where they are in the sequence. I'm going to go ahead and add this tag and click done. We send an email. We wait till a certain date. We send another email. We're going to add a tag. You can remove a tag. You can subscribe them to an additional list at some point. You can unsubscribe them from a list. Let's say we were sending a follow-up sequence for a free lead magnet, and we are going to, in email two or three, start offering a special offer. But we don't want them to continue getting the sequence after they've made the purchase. Let's take a look at how we can do that with conditional logic. So we're going to click conditional split. And in my case, we're going to say, if they have a tag and I have a list of all of the tags of the products people can purchase in my system those tags were set up ahead of time those are in a category called products purchased and you'll see that here under YBG your best group products purchased we'll say if they purchased bonus support hours let's say we're marketing more hours we say done now at this point it gets a little bit complex because you can't see what your condition is here unless you click on the three dots and click edit and what we're saying here is if it's false if they don't have that tag yet that would mean they haven't made the purchase. We're going to go ahead and keep the sequence going. And we just sent an email. There's no delay in here. What we would probably do is put a time delay in. And we can say wait a number of days. Let's just wait a day. We're going to move this over and say if they have not purchased yet, we're going to continue down this path with more emails. We might say send email. This is email three subject email three and again you're putting your details in here and the email message is basic email three content done what you can see is if they have already purchased and you'll remember on this conditional split we said if they have this tag which they will only get if they've purchased and that's in an automation that's in a completely separate part of GrooveMail but if they have purchased that would be true we can do a couple of things one we could subscribe them to a list or we could add a new tag or we can unsubscribe them from a list today in this example I'm gonna end the sequence so I clicked end of sequence and it automatically added it to this longest line. I'm going to change this end of sequence so that it says if it's true and I'm going to drag that dot from true to the dot on end of sequence and you'll see that it breaks the other line. I'm going to pull this back up here and so hopefully you can see that we had no triggers because we're going to launch this sequence based on our own triggers outside of the sequence. We're going to send an email time delay to a particular date, send an email, add a tag, do a conditional split, check to see if they have purchased yet. If not, we're going to go on with a time delay and send an email. Now we can continue with the same kind of conditional split from here on. So let's add another conditional split and say if they have a tag, check for the same product, done. Now we're going to move that over here and we're going to connect these two using the dots. So from email three, we're going to pull from that dot down to the conditional split. And now we're checking again. So after they've gotten email three, we're checking to see if they made a purchase. If they didn't, we're going to put another time delay in. We're going to wait another day. And you can see now again that we're starting to branch out we're going to drag from the false dot to the time delay then we're going to send another email email four and now if they haven't purchased yet we're going to send them another email make sure when you do this that you always add an end of sequence at the end of any lines we're going to go ahead and pull again that dot from true down to end of sequence and we're going to put an end of sequence here this is important because what this is going to do is pull this contact out of this sequence so that if for whatever reason they would ever be put back into it it would operate starting from the top as opposed to not functioning because they're stuck inside of a sequence so we do end of sequence we send this email and maybe that's the last email we're going to send so we can do another end of sequence drag the dot from the email to the end of sequence and now this is what the entire sequence looks like we don't have a trigger inside of the sequence we could we could trigger it based on a tag we could trigger it on a list or forms but secondly we send an email 
Right away we send an email and then we have a time delay to a particular date. This doesn't have to be to a particular date. It could be just a delay of one day or two days or five hours, whatever you want. We send email number two and after email number two, we chose to add a tag. These are just showing you things you can do. But following that, we did the conditional split where we said, have they purchased the product yet? If they haven't, we're going to do a time delay and send an email and continue down the sequence. If they have, we're done with this sequence. We send another email. We do the same split test again. Have they purchased the product? If no, we go over to a time delay and send our final email, but we put an end of sequence at the end of each one of these sequences. We click save, and what we've done is we've created a full sequence following a perhaps a lead magnet following the purchase of a product with an upsell that we're trying to share with them, but it has four emails in it. After the second one, we start testing to see if they've purchased the product. Hopefully that's helpful for you in setting up your own email follow-up sequence using Groove Mail. Thanks for watching. I hope it was helpful. I want to remind you that we have a free funnel build workshop every third Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern, and you're welcome to join it. You can click the link in the description. And I also want to remind you about the Groove for Growth Academy, which is the number one academy for learning how to master Groove on your own. You can find out more information about that in the link in the description as well. In the meantime, keep grooving and we'll see you the next time.